Hello, it's Acacia Developer here, and today we're going to be creating a 3D skybox. So today we're going to be dealing with camera rendering depths. We're also going to be talking about different layers. So we're going to put our 3D skybox on its own layer. And by the end of this tutorial, your 3D skybox camera should be both rotating and moving with the player's camera. And of course, we're going to be discussing why you would want to do it this way. So to begin with, I'm just going to give you a brief rundown of the structure of my scene. So we have over here a platform which represents the main level of sorts. And then on top of that, we have our player controller. Now, this is a first person controller that allows uh, the player to look around and move. And you may have noticed over here we have this massive terrain mesh. Now this is the terrain um, within the 3D skybox. And this is our 3D skybox camera. So whenever we look at our 3D skybox, we'll be looking at it through this camera here. So the first problem to address um, is the fact that we've actually put two cameras in the scene and both of them have audio listeners on them. So you'll see in the console, usually it should give you like a little notification. So what I can do, I, I want audio within my main level, but I don't need it in the skybox. So I can simply select my skybox camera and remove my audio listener component from that. Now the second problem I want to address, uh, when we actually launch our game, you'll see that, well, all we can see is the view from the 3D skybox camera. Now this is because this is the camera that is rendering on top of our player controller camera over here. So if we click on it, we can see that its depth is negative one. So if we just come back over to our player camera and just select that in the hierarchy, the, the depth of this is also negative one. But what we can do is we can boost that up to zero so it's slightly higher than negative one and then that way this will be the camera that renders on top so if we just press play as you can see the player camera now becomes the camera that renders um, on top and you'll find that the 3d skybox camera it's still rendering but it's just rendering below the player camera and this is going to be an important aspect that we'll utilize later on the next issue that we're going to address is the, is the fact that we can actually see uh, this skybox uh, terrain here. And what we're going to do to fix that, we're going to actually shift uh, this terrain onto its own layer as well. There's also other issues uh, that this layering uh, thing solves. So for example, if this camera is facing in this direction, fair enough we can't actually see the level from here because the camera is dipped down behind this mountain but it's still going to be rendering the level and really that's unnecessary because all the uh, 3D Skybox camera needs to look at is the terrain mesh itself and, and not the actual level so by shifting uh, the Skybox onto its own layer we can actually fix this issue so what we can do, I'm, I'm just going to select the parent object and then if you go over to the top right, you'll see a drop down box for different layers you can have. So if you just drop that down and then we can select add layer. And I'm just going to put it in layer 11 for now, but I'm just going to call this skybox. And this will simply create a new layer called skybox. Now, if we go back to our 3D skybox parent again, and then we just go to the drop down and select skybox. It's going to notify you uh, whether or not you want to change all of the child objects. So this is both the terrain mesh and the 3D skybox camera. Um, for now, I'm just going to click on yes because we want both of those on the layer. Um, now, what we can do is we can select our skybox camera and we can select which layers we render and which layers we don't render. And we can do that by going to the culling mask in the inspector. We can just drop this down and i'm just going to click on nothing now i'm going to drop this down again and then just select the skybox so out of all the layers available uh, in this scene we're only able or we're only going to be uh, rendering what's on the skybox layer uh, through this camera which is of course our terrain mesh and now if we rotate this camera and, and kind of shift it up a little bit you'll see that although the it's it's looking at this 
level over here it's not actually appearing in the camera um, the camera preview which is exactly what we want and then also we have the problem of uh, the player camera is actually rendering the terrain mesh itself so we're going to have to edit the the culling mask on this and in that case we want to render everything except um, anything on the skybox layer so we can just click on that and as you can see the skybox has now disappeared out of the view of this camera so now when we launch the game the the terrain is now on its own layer now of course uh, we want to be able to see the mountains around us so in order to do that uh, we need to change the clear flags. Um, I am on player camera, aren't I? So if you come up here to the inspector, if you look on the right, we have clear flags. Select this drop down. Now basically this applies to uh, your background, so the actual background of the game. At the moment when we look at the background, so when there's nothing there, it will just give us a skybox texture. We could also have a solid color, so as you can see, we now have a solid blue color in the camera preview but what we want is the depth only now the best way of explaining this is when you look at your your game's background or the skybox whatever you want to call it instead of a skybox texture or a solid color you can actually see um, the contents of the camera that is rendering behind the player camera. So in this case it's going to be the 3D Skybox camera because we know that has a depth of negative 1, whilst the player camera has a depth of 0. So cameras rendering over one another um, in the frame buffer is definitely um, an important thing in order to achieve uh, this sort of effect. But now when we press play, you should see that we get our Skybox camera. Now at the moment it looks rather strange because the player is able to, to look around and move. But the actual uh, Skybox camera is static. Um, so what we want to do is actually start moving the Skybox camera with the player camera somehow. In some sort of way. So to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come off that. I'm then going to go to my scripts, oh I'm already in my scripts folder, so I can then create a new C Sharp script. I'm just going to call this Skybox Camera and then we can double click on it to open it up. So once we're in our Skybox Camera class, I'm going to declare a serialize field and this is going to be a private field of type transform, I'm going to call this player camera. So basically the skybox camera is going to withhold a reference to our player camera's transform. And then in the update method, um, what I want to do uh, to begin with is just make sure that the rotation of the skybox camera is always equal to whatever rotation uh, the player camera is facing in. Uh, dot rotation, like so. And then back in Unity, I want to double click on my 3D Skybox camera. And this is going to be where I attach uh, my script. This is going to be the Sky Skybox camera script. Um, and once we've attached that, all we need to do is drag in our player camera. And then that will slot its transform into that slot here. So now we have a reference to the player camera's transform. And now when we hit play you'll see that the 3D Skybox camera, its rotation always matches up with the player's camera. The only movement that we've bound to our 3D Skybox camera is the rotation of the player's camera and not um, anything to do with translation or position. So it's going to stay in exactly the same place and it's only its rotation that's going to change. So the last thing that we're going to implement is the ability for the 3D Skybox to actually kind of scroll as our player walks across the level. So to begin with, I'm just going to center this to 000. Of course, this is um, this camera's local position. Since it's within um, this parent 3D Skybox, then its position is going to be the center of this parent, which is here. Just a quick note that the um, 3D Skybox camera is required to be parented with something. In this case, it's the 3D Skybox. And whatever its parent is, you need to make sure that it has no rotation applied to it, or else it could produce some funny results while we're moving. The other crucial thing is to make sure that your player object is roughly at the origin of the world. And I say this because if you start creating 
uh, players like way over here, like millions of miles in this direction, then there's the potential that your camera, your 3D Skybox camera, is going to move off in this direction as well and you're not going to be able to see the terrain. So as long as the player is at the centre of the world and the camera is parented uh, to something that has no rotation, then you should be absolutely fine. So to begin with, I'm going to give you a brief rundown on the mathematics that we're about to use. So on the left here, we have a three component vector that represents the position of the player's camera in world space. And to the right, we have a three component vector that represents um, the position of the skybox camera in its local space. So what we do is we factor in something called the skybox scale. So what, what this means is, in order to obtain the position of the skybox camera, we simply take the world position of the player camera, and then we just divide it by the skybox scale. So in this case, it's 1. So whatever we divide by, um, it's always going to give us the same result. And the same likewise for this example. So the player camera has moved on the z-axis one unit. That means that the skybox camera is going to move on the z-axis one unit as well because we're dividing by one and it's giving us the same output vector. But now if we change the skybox scale to two, for every unit uh, that the player camera moves, the skybox camera is now going to move half a unit because we're dividing by 2 and we know that 1 divided by 2 is equal to 0 0.5. So that is how we mathematically map between these two cameras. So once we're back in our skybox camera script, I'm going to declare a float, uh, which is going to be the skybox uh, scale. So what we want to do is grab hold of the 3D Skybox camera's local position and then we're going to set that to the player camera's position but then we'll divide that by the Skybox scale. So now when we return uh, we'll see that we have our Skybox scale slot. So for now I'm going to set this to 1. So since the Skybox scale is, is 1 that means the change in position relative to the player is going to be one to one. So it will be the same essentially. Uh, so if we start, as you can see, we're actually traversing the terrain quite quickly. And you may find at some points that the Skybox camera, it's able to clip through the terrain, which is something you don't really want. So just be wary uh, because that can happen. But what we can do is we can just keep cranking it up. So we can make the skybox maybe 10 times bigger. Uh, and then that way we'll move. And uh, you can see that the skybox is still moving. But it's just moving considerably slower relative to the player. But yeah, really, you can just keep tweaking this. So if you wanted it uh, a thousand, a hundred times larger than it originally is, uh, then... Yeah, go for it. And as you can see, the skybox in this case is hardly moving. So I've just quickly opened up a new scene uh, just to show you why exactly we would want to kind of get a small terrain and then enlarge it. Uh, it's because of this. So if we have our camera here, and you, you know, you could say, well, you know, you could just keep scaling and scaling and scaling until, until you have a terrain which is the actual size of what you want. But one of the severe problems with this is if you make it big enough, I'll just show you, I can make it big enough. But as you can see, the, the terrain has, has now become so large that it exceeds uh, the camera's frustum. So you'll see over here, this is called the far clip plane. And since uh, all this geometry out here lays beyond the far clip plane of the camera's viewing frustum, that means that the camera clips it and you won't be able to see it. Although if you look if you look over here we can adjust them so we can make it bigger. But then the numbers start becoming ridiculously big. I don't like adjusting uh, all of these settings. I'd much prefer uh, to make the terrain smaller and much more maintainable than something like this. I mean, look at the speed that I'm moving in the viewport here. It's it's just it takes so long to to speed up that it's it's just ridiculous. 
So ideally, you, you'll want a, a small terrain, and then you just want to enlarge it or give the illusion that it's, it's larger than it actually is. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it was informative. Thank you very much for watching, and like always, I shall see you soon.